You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. Welcome to From Beneath the Hollywood Sign. If you love old movies, Hollywood history, or the golden age of filmmaking, you've come to the right place. This is the podcast that talks about amazing stories of Tinseltown from another era and fascinating conversations with writer-producer Steve Kubine and actress-writer Nan McNamara. So Steve, did Ava Gardner and Howard Hughes have a good relationship? Well, they did until he dislocated her jaw. What? Well, don't worry. She hit him back with an ashtray. From Beneath the Hollywood Sign is the gin joint for you. How's this? I'll ask a question. What question? Jazz question. Now you get it right. We roll. I know everything there is to know about Miles. Lay it on me. Recorded in Chicago, Illinois, with your hosts, Ken, Matt, Neil, and Jeff, this is Triviality. The cream of the crop. Hey, and welcome to Triviality, the game where a lack of seriousness meets a little bit of knowledge. My name's Ken, and I'll be your host today, and today we're going to have a very special Lay It On Me episode. Hey guys, uh, this is Neil. So, uh, you didn't ask for it, but you've been hearing it on several different episodes. Ken uh, likes to say that he knows a lot about The Matrix. At long last, here it is, the big Matrix episode. The big Matrix episode. I'm a little worried because I don't know much about the movie. I've seen it a few times, so I don't know if my questions are either too easy or they're way too hard, but I tried to kind of mix some easy and hard ones in here, so I'm really curious to see what Ken knows about The Matrix, and hopefully... If some of you guys listening are big Matrix fans, then you'll get a kick out of these questions too. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure how this is gonna go either. Um, Neil is the one who keeps saying that I'm I'm the expert, but uh, I guess I do know quite a bit about it. But uh, let's let's just see how it goes. Neil, lay it on me. All right, welcome to the desert of the real. Number one, Hugo Weaving plays Mr. Smith. Agent main... Smith. Okay, <laughs> Agent Smith. See, you already know uh, the main antagonist in the film. What are the names of his two sidekicks? Brown and Jones. That is correct. While at work, Neo receives a cell phone from Morpheus by what delivery company? UPS, FedEx, City Delivery, or USPS? Oh, that's tough. I believe it's uh, UPS, though. It is FedEx. Oh, man. Uh, that's okay. See, obviously, I didn't know if these were good or not, because I know you're very, uh, you know, you're very detail-oriented with these movies, so... All right. Now, now that you say it's FedEx, I can see the envelope tearing open that he pulls the phone yeah, out Yeah, it's a yeah, FedEx Yeah, you're right, envelope. you're right. When Neo wakes up to his computer, it types out a message in four lines. The first line has three words. The second and third lines have four words. And the last line has three words. What is the full message? All right. It's wake up, Neo. That's right. Um, follow the white rabbit. That's the third line. I'll count it, though. That's fine. Man, I can't remember. I love this movie. This is a hard question. <laughs> well, uh, to give you a hint, the last three words, the last line, have to do with something that happens that gets him out of his computer chair. Yeah. So it's knock, knock, I, I know, comes up on the, on the screen. So that's the I don't last know. phrase with its three words. So it's knock, yeah, knock, 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 knock. That's right. I, I you had it. But that's, that's three. Three words three in words. the last line, yeah. Second oh, you, you said. Yeah, there's four there's You four said it lines. wrong. No, I didn't. There's four lines. The first line has three words. Second and third lines have four words. Last line has three words. How am I supposed to compute that? All right, go ahead. Go ahead with the next. So it's wake up, Neo. The Matrix, Matrix, the has, Matrix you. has you. Follow the white Follow rabbit. Right. Knock, knock, Neo. Right. Yeah. All right. Jeff told me you knew this fact, but I'll ask it anyway as my follow-up question has to do with it. When Neo gets paid two grand for a disc, he pulls it out of his hiding spot in a book. What is the name of the book? I believe that's, uh, and I might get this a little bit wrong, but I believe it's Simulation and Simulacrum. Uh, so you're close enough. It's Simulacra and Simulation. Oh, I just had it backwards. By John Baudrillard. John Baudrillard, yeah. So I figured you'd know that, which you did. So my follow-up question is this. When Neo opens up the book, what is the name of the chapter where his hiding spot is in? Oh, I have no idea. It's on Nihilism. Oh, that that makes sense for the uh, Wachowski siblings. Yep. There are two numbers I'm looking for. You're really beating me up with these. I see. I didn't know if these were hard or not. Sorry. Uh, the, there are two numbers I'm looking for. I want the number of the room that starts and ends the movie, and also the number of Neo's apartment. Man. Because they're, they're very distinctive to the movie. Uh, I'm gonna guess that it's maybe pi three point one four. Uh, no. Or three one four. I'll give you a hint. So 
what does Neo become? The one. Right, and his room number is uh, from that, basically. One? 101. 101. Yeah. 101. And the beginning and uh, the, the room in the beginning is the one that Trinity starts out in when she gets caught. Oh, I see. So it's 303. Yeah. And that's where Neo has his final fight with Agent Smith. Nice. It's 303. All right. After writing The Cat in the Hat, which used 225 words, Dr. Seuss's editor bet him that he couldn't write a book that used fewer than that number. He prevailed by writing Green, green Eggs and Ham with only 50 different words. One of the nouns in that 50 is the name of a character in the film. Do you know what it is? Um, mouse. Mouse is correct. Great poll. All right. That was a good question. Thank you. Uh, this is the lightning round. I like to call How Did They Die? I'm going to give you a way. Oh, spoilers! <laughs> I'm going to give you a certain way a, a character died in the film, and you have to tell me who killed them. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll, I should okay. be good at this. All right, who was shot with an EMP gun by Cipher? An EMP gun. That was uh, Dozer. Correct. Tank was also shot, but he survived the blast. Uh, who was shot by agents while trying to fend them off alone? A uh, mouse. Right. Who was shot with an EMP gun by Tank? That would be Cipher. And finally, these two characters had their plugs pulled by Cipher. Uh, Switch and APOC. Very good, very good. Uh, See, so I got a, a good variety here. Some of them are easy. All right. This famous actor turned down the role of the architect in The Matrix Reloaded to work on an Alan Moore film adaptation. That's uh, Sean Connery. Correct. He did not want to play Colonel Sanders in uh, The Matrix Reloaded, I guess. <laughs> uh, all right, so Marcus Chong, who played Tank in The Matrix, sued the filmmakers over not being included in the two sequels, which he says he was promised. He also accused the filmmakers of intentionally publishing numerous false statements that he was a terrorist in order to defame him. <laughs> Yikes. What character replaced him as a pilot on the Nebuchadnezzar? That would be Link. Very good. And speaking of Link, played by Harold Perrineau Jr., what relation did his character have to Tank? Okay, so uh, Tank, I believe, was his... I'm going to... Uh, just let me think this out. I think he was the brother-in-law. So, uh, yeah, his... Link's wife's brother was Tank. Correct, brother-in-law, yep. Uh, the human resistance calls Sentinels what? Um, squiddies. Correct. What brand of battery does Morpheus hold up to show Neo? I believe uh, it's either Energizer or Duracell. I think it's the, it's the copper top, so I think that's uh, Duracell with the copper top. Very good. Duracell, copper top. When Cypher is having a steak with Agent Smith, what instrument is being played in the restaurant for mood music? Um, there's a close-up shot of the uh, the hands strumming the strings of a harp. Correct. And uh, my final question before a little special thing here. During that same dinner, when Agent Smith is having dinner with Cypher, who is eating a steak and says, ignorance is bliss, Agent Smith calls Cypher by his real name. What is it? Mr. Reagan, I believe. Mr. Reagan is correct. That's right, Ken. So since I don't know much about The Matrix, at least not enough to come up with hard enough questions for you since you did get 15 out of 20, I enlisted the help of our uh, trivia guru and uh, weekly host of our Monday Night Pub Trivia, Jason of uh, Liquid Courage. And uh, I like to call this the Liquid Courage Trinity. It's going to be three super Ooh. hard questions written by the Morpheus to our Nebuchadnezzar crew. Wow. And here they are. Question one. In a speech agent smith gives while talking to morpheus he calls humans four specific things related to how they multiply and multiply until every natural resource is consumed what are those four things so he goes uh humans are a virus you're a plague a scourge a scourge and no virus and plague he goes, virus and plague are two of them oh, let me let me talk it through a disease that's one of them yep got one more um, virus plague disease it's the smell uh <laughs> i can't remember the last one the last one is cancer, cancer. oh yeah. all right uh question two of the trinity the nebuchadnezzar has a crew of nine including neo morpheus and trinity what are the names of the other six crew members okay so um we already got mouse dozer apoc switch um tank and cypher that's right uh, the earlier questions might have helped you out on that a little bit. Oh, yeah. I needed the, I needed the help on yeah. that. <laughs> and uh, the last question uh, from the Liquid Courage Trinity is, philosophy features quite heavily throughout The Matrix. The film itself can be described as a modern-day adaptation of what famous philosophical construct found in The Republic? The Republic. Quote, The Republic. 
What what is the Republic? What are we talking about here? So I'll, I'll try and yeah, on this one. Jeff was a philosophy major. It's true. The uh, so um, not just a major, but I have a degree in it. So <laughs> uh, so uh, Plato's uh, Republic is a one of his dialogues, essentially, uh, in which he wrote about uh, the ideal constructs for uh, how he would found a republic. So oh. um, I'm pretty sure I know the thought experiment here, but uh, I won't give anything else. So away. I'm going to I'm going to say how would you describe that? What, Jeff? Cause that's what, what I'm looking for. What I, I'm guessing, you know what it is. Oh, uh, I, I, yeah, I, it, is, it is indeed. So what given given that additional information, maybe it's the the, the cave. What's the full title? The uh, really? Would, that's not good enough. I would give you the cave. Yeah. The, I, I the, want, Jason the, wants the full title, though, and he's oh, he's the master in this. The parable of the cave or the the. Um, it's it's something of the cave. It's uh, starts with an A. I'll give you that hint. Analogy of the cave. You're it's getting there. The, I mean, I've, I've I know I know it. I know what it is. Allegory of the cave. The allegory. And who's Thank it by, you. though? We already said uh, Plato. Oh, we already said Plato. <laughs> yeah, is it a uh, new question? Plato. Jeff Jeff gave it. Plato. Okay. So between me and Jeff, we were able to. Uh, uh, I was pretty sure he was going for the allegory of the cave. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thanks, Jason. He he squirmed a little bit. Probably not as much as you wanted him to, but we, you can get him back at trivia. Well, so, well, basically, um, with the allegory of the cave is someone who leaves the cave, and then they go back and they tell everybody about what they saw, but it's hard for anybody to believe them inside the cave because they don't have the, essentially, the, the point of view of okay. outside of the cave. And, and they think the shadows are the real thing. Someone comes back and uh, tries to explain to them that that's not the real thing. And uh, I, believe they, I believe they kill them for their, basically, heresy. But uh, it's been yeah. a long time since well, I read that. Text, well, Jason, so. that'll that'll teach you to get Jeff talking about philosophy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, next time you'll have to do a late on me for Jeff on philosophy. That'll be a real interesting Boom. episode. That would be weird. <laughs> uh, there's there's not a lot of like hard facts yeah. and figures in philosophy, so that would be interesting. All right. Thanks, Jason, for those questions. You can find Liquid Courage Entertainment on Facebook by typing in Liquid Courage with a K. And uh, you can find all the locations he does trivia. Uh, so, Ken, I hope you had a fun time. Yeah, great questions from Jason and uh, from you as well. I uh, really enjoyed uh, the, the kind of mix there. Uh, kind of some hard ones and some n- not so hard ones for me. And uh, any Matrix fans out there, let us know uh, how you scored and you know what you thought of the questions. And if you have any other good trivia, feel free to write it in on, on our uh, Facebook or send it to our email. And uh, thanks for listening to this episode of Triviality, and we'll see you next time. This isn't real. What is real? How do you define real? If you're talking about what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste and see, then real is simply electrical signals interpreted by your brain.